Hello, this is my assignment 4.1, Ethical and Legal Issues in Sport and Exercise Science Research. Now in this assignment firstly, we will be looking at what the issues in sport and exercise science research are and how they are determined. There are two main types of issues, these are ethical and legal issues. Firstly, in ethical issues come under our moral principles, what we believe in, it is between what, and it is between what we believe in right and wrong. Ethical issues do not tend to cause physical and emotional harm to others. Now secondly, legal issues, issues which are different because they are defined by the law presented to us. These are presented to us by the civil and criminal courts. These keep us bounded and prevent us from causing harm in certain aspects due to the fear of the implications associated with doing so. How are ethical and legal issues clarified? Firstly, the British Association of Sport and Exercise Science Bases Code of Conduct. It is, it is their responsibility to ensure that all sport and exercise re science research is done in a way that is ethically and legally sound. Before a research project can begin, they must receive clearance from bases in order to do so. In order for mission to be granted, the research project must follow the four C's. Competence, confidentiality, conduct and, con and consent. Competent, confid, competent. The research must be skilled in what they are doing, e.g. they cannot conduct tests, they are not qualified in doing so. Confidentiality, the data cannot be published with the information of research subjects without their permission. If permission isn't granted, all details must remain anonymous. Conduct, this is simply general professionalism. This means that general attitude of the researcher must remain towards the goal of the research at all times and neither for any other reason such as personal gain. And finally, consent. The test subjects must be fully aware of what they are consenting towards. They must be fully informed of all parts of the research and have nothing hidden from them. DRIP, which is mainly used in psychology, is essentially the same as the four C's but with different words. Deception, right to withdraw, informed consent, protection, protection from harm and privacy. Deception is very similar to consent. The test subjects must be fully aware of what they are agreeing to and no information is hidden from them. The right to withdraw, the test subject must be aware of the opportunity to withdraw at any time if they so wish. Informed consent, this is where the test subject must fully understand and agree to what they are do, doing in order to continue the research. Protection from harm, the test subject must be ensured that no physical nor emotional harm will reach them during the course of the experiment. And finally, privacy. This is very similar to confidentiality, in which that there are per in that any personal information the test subject doesn't want to reveal must not re be revealed under any circumstances. For the next part of the presentation, we will be looking at scenarios and the implications that can occur if you do not follow the ethical and legal boundaries set by the companies such as bases. By using the four Cs, we will be following the general outline of this assi assignment, which is. You are working as a trainee sports scientist for the British Gymnasts Regional Office. You have been asked to prepare and carry out several pieces of research on young female gymnasts, but you need to consider the ethical and legal issues associated with the research. Example 1. You enter the gymnastics hall after all the parents have left and ask a group of 8-10 to 10 year old female gymnasts if, they take lact if you can take lactate examples from them at different intervals within their session. You do this knowing you have never had any experience with lactate testing in the past. First, what could go wrong? Consent. The, the girls at their age will have no idea what lactate testing is and may agree to it without knowing what it is and in fact it, may, it involves needles. And competence. It's clearly outlined in this example that the research has no experience in lactate testing. So, what are the implications of this? Physical harm. Something going wrong due to lack of confidence and the lack of in, informed consent from the gymnast girls means that they they are very likely to hurt themselves when they are being tested due to neither of them having any idea what they are doing. Emotional harm, the fact there are needles involved may distress the child. Fines, parents may sue on the basis of uninformed consent and harm done to their child based on this. Basis accreditation, basis will most likely release any accreditation towards you this means you will not be able to conduct sports science research again. Professional credibility. 
Your name will be tarnished and all research done to this point will be in doubt. Now, how can this all be prevented? Before the parents leave, issue a letter informing them of what the research is and what is going to be done to test for this research. Ask for them to speak to their child to inform them and then ask for the consent of both parents and ch child to conduct the research. Also, either become trained in lactate testing or get some with experience to take the blood samples so physical and emotional harm can be avoided. Following all this will mean the parents will not sue based on the uninformed consent because consent will be given and the harm and the child will know exactly what they are going to be experiencing. Your credibility will not be te will not be um your credibility will not be questioned because yeah be, your credibility will not be questioned because of no nothing will go wrong nothing should go wrong during the experiment due to all procedures have been carried out correctly and bases have no reason to remove your accreditation <sighs> Example 2. During a gymnastics session, you have planned to observe how the girls react to changes in, ten in intensity. During this, one of the girls approaches you, saying she cannot continue as she has hurt her foot. You respond to this aggressively and begin to insult her while forcing her to continue. Later in the session, it turns out her foot is broken and this extent of injury could have been avoided if stopped earlier. So, what, what could go wrong? Well, the girl has broken off her foot by a question of conduct. You haven't been following general professionalism and have forced her to continue. Your response in the way you responded aggressively and insulting her is also another question of conduct. So, what are the, what are the implications of this? Physical harm, the girl has broken her foot and can no longer continue in gymnastics while it heals. Emotional harm, due to your aggressive response and the f fact she has broken her foot and can no longer continue in gymnastics until it heals this means well firstly the aggressive response will mean that she will be having an adult responding aggressively to her would most certainly upset her and also the fact she cannot continue in gymnastics while it heals will most likely upset her because she cannot do the sport she enjoys and your professional credibility will definitely be questioned because your ability to perform research and your general character, e.g. your attitude towards test subjects will be questioned. Responding aggressively to a child will most certainly question how you, con how you conduct your experiments and whether you should be allowed to. So basis may also remove your accreditation based on this. How can this be prevented? When the girl asks to sit out without question, you will let her do so and make sure she gets someone to take a look at her foot before she thinks about continuing. This will avoid the broken foot and will also avoid the emotional harm linked to the injury. Also, respond with a gentle approach and the child will not receive emotional harm based on this. With wise actions, your professional credibility will no longer be questioned also. Example 3. You begin to test the flexibility of a range of girls aged 10 to 16. You receive permission from the girls and their parents to conduct the experiment. However, the consent form doesn't provide permission to publish results with the information of the girls, although you do so anyway. During the test, you also believe when the girls can reach further, you grab her inappropriately around the torso and upper thigh, trying to help her improve the step stretch. So, what could go wrong? Confidentiality. You lack permission to publish results, but do so anyway. Conduct. Inappropriate conduct in terms of physically grabbing a young girl is the opposite of general prof professionalism. The girl may become f injured due to the cause of overstretching, and the girl may simply feel uncomfortable with you grabbing her in such a way. So, what are the implications? Physical harm. The girl becomes injured from overstretching. Emotional harm. The girl feels uncomfortable with you touching her in such a way, and also becoming if she does become injured this not being able to continue in her sport for a while may f feel make her feel distressed and upset there may be law or prison sentence involved you can be sentenced for perversity and paedophilia by touching her in such a way fines if the girl is injured parents may decide to sue based on the reason she is injured e.g. you should know better based on the con conduct the professional conduct you should represent having the knowledge to know not to force someone to to do a stretch in such a way. Your professional credibility, word of your inappropriate 
behaviour with this child, the way you have touched them, comes out and people begin to doubt your research, this means people will not believe your research in the same way and it will be questioned. Basis accreditation. Basis may remove your right to research, deeming you are not to be trusted, especially around children and teenagers, based on the circumstances presented. Also, due to publishing the results about, with information about test subjects, even when permission was not get granted. How can this be prevented? How to avoid this? Do not publish data with information when not granted. Do not force anything upon the girls, e.g. do not grab and force a stretch. This will avoid inappropriate contact, injury and emotional harm experienced in the situation. If this is done, done, professional credibility will not be questioned and basis will have no reason to remove your accreditation. Example 4. You inform the parents and children that you will be conducting an experiment on how they respond to more intense periods of activity. However, in, in reality you are actually testing to see the fitness levels vary between individuals of the same, same age, sex and sport. You also publish results through actual experiment without the consent of those involved or their guardians. So, what could go wrong? No informed consent and confidentiality is questioned, e.g. not agreeing to the data being published. Simple as that. Implications of this, emotional harm. The children, on, upon seeing the actual results of the actual experiment, will disapprove of their current levels of health and fitness and may feel disheartened upon seeing it. Fines, fines, um, parents may sue based on the information of their children being published without their informed consent. Your professional credibility will also be questioned because the fact that you felt the need to use deception to obtain, to obtain the results, people will doubt your name and previous results you have published and, and your means of obtaining them. Prison sentence. Conducting an experiment and publishing the results of which no permission at all from those involved will break a couple laws of consent and confidentiality. And finally, basis will remove your accreditation and your accreditation will be lost based on your means of attaining the results. They will remove it based on you not following ethical rules that established between the researcher and those being researched upon. Now, how can this be prevented? Inform the parents and children of the actual experiment. Also ask for permission to publish. If no consent of to this, then publish with anonymous data. This will mean confidentiality rules are not broken and consent is obtained, meaning no prison sentence, fines, nor will your credibility or accreditation be questioned. Emotional harm may still befall the child due to the results, but the child not seeing the results of the experiment can avoid this. Example 5. During session, you are only instructing and taking data from young girls and when young girls begin to mess around and their attention drifts from the task at hand. This irritates you, and in a moment of rage, you slap one of the girls. You slap on one of the girls. You feel guilty and apologise, but for a number of weeks, this girl is afraid of you, begins to cry whenever you exchange eye contact with her. So, what could go wrong? Conduct. Your general professionalism is not apparent. Slapping a child is completely inappropriate. Um, phys the physical harm of being slapped. The emotional harm, e.g. she begins to cry whenever you exchange eye contact with her. So what are the implications of this? Physical harm. The girl being slapped is going to cause her physical harm. The emotional harm, the girl has now become afraid of you. A prison sentence. Violence towards children is not tolerated and you will be sentenced for a short period of time based on slapping the girl. Your professional credibility, you will lose the credibility you will lose your credibility to, in any previous research done and your name will be tarnished. And basis will remove your accreditation and the right to experiment as a sports scientist based on your means of how you research. How to avoid this. Control your temper and attempt to stop the girls. If that doesn't work, then separate them. And if that doesn't work, ask them to sit out and have a word with their parents rather than resorting to physical violence. That is the end. Thank you for listening.